Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I have the enormous pleasure to be joined by one of my favorite drummers of all time, Mr. Tim Alexander. Tim, welcome hello, to the podcast, Hello, man. hello, hello. Yes. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, um, and I truly am not just saying that. I have grown up a diehard, I've talked about it on the show before, diehard Primus fan, um, seen you guys play many times live. My first concert ever was I believe 2003 when you were back with the band. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was White Tamas with the big gong bass drum behind you. Yes. Which was incredible, which we'll probably talk about more here in a little bit. But um, so, Tim, my plan for today while I've got you here is uh, to have you on talking about some, we're going to look at some classic Primus music videos, okay. some little clips, and then have you tell us a little bit about those um, uh, those clips. But before we do that, I want to go into a lot more detail later, but you've got something new called the stick Academy. So before we get into anything, why don't you give everyone kind of a brief rundown of what the stick Academy is, what you're working on now, and then we'll get into these clips. All right. Yeah. So yes, we've, uh, my wife and I have been working at this idea of creating an online drum Academy. And so it's called stick Academy. And um, it's a chance for me to give back to the music community. Um, and it's to help young people, intermediate, advanced people. Um, I want to help them understand not only, you know, more about what they're playing, but kind of the why. Um, mm. Because... When we're drummers, we, I think a lot of us approach drums from the point of, oh, I'm playing a beat, um, playing a groove. But there's another side to that, uh, which I, I don't hear about. Um, and I never heard about when I was younger and I've discovered this was, is how rhythms affect us. Like when I'm listening to music and I listen to the drums, you know, there's, there's certain things that, make me feel different ways and that's kind of the concept behind looking at what i play and why i play it um the effect of using the toms in a certain way or uh transitions or fills uh, which a lot of you know get thrown around as fills i just don't prefer the term fill because it sounds meaningless it sounds like you're just filling space when actually whenever we're doing something like that we're usually creating a transition into another part we're signaling sure. we're signaling the feel of what's about to happen or just breaking up like a continuous um melody or something that's just kind of repeating and the drums are like the only thing that can really uh keep your attention in the music because we we're keeping the rhythm going and yeah we can alter that rhythm in certain ways to still make it feel good but yet say something and so what i'm doing with that academy is i've recorded videos talking about this stuff talking about just the key things that i think are necessary and, and i know a lot of people think you're a drummer you've got a all four limbs have to do eight different things and i every time i talk to someone you know who who's new to drums they think it's this crazy octopus type instrument when i always tell them i said no it's not like that it's everything works together it's hmm. sure you might have one hand hitting four times when the other one's only hitting two, but they're moving together and in time. At least that's my music. And the majority yeah. of music I hear is like that. There are drummers where, you know, you can do tricks and, you know, independence things that just kind of are for show. Um, I haven't heard music that that's incorporated. Um, and so I push more about playing the drums and coming from a point of writing music for people to hear and people to listen to. And so 
that's what I focus on in the Stick Academy. And I have filmed videos sure. about that. I've talked about some of the parts I do in Primus songs. Um, I've just demonstrated, uh, you know, this is how I do My Name is Mud. And, and, and this, is, this is the dynamic approach that I'm thinking about. So I'm, I'm letting people in on my concepts that I'm always, always thinking about when I'm playing. And um, I do a variety of different songs and talk about, you know, why I might use those toms versus a hi-hat or a ride cymbal. There's a reason. And there's a, it's not just, it's not just, oh, I'm playing this beat. Now I'm going to play this beat. You know, I never, mm, sure. I never think like that. Everything is from a point of how am I going to affect the music that's going to affect who hears it. Yeah. So yeah, there's a stickacademy.com is, is the place where people can go. And we also created an app for the phone where you can access um, a beginning course that I created. That's yeah, that's called ignition. And I've got uh, momentum, which is the series of videos. And I'm still, I'm still working on more videos um, you know, we're just coming out with this and, um, I've got like level one and, and beginning videos and then kind of level two, which incorporates a little more advanced ideas, but nothing is too complex. So I encourage all, all drummers to check it out for sure. Um, totally. and then there's a way to apply for private lessons if people are interested when i have when i have the time and ability um i'm opening up my time and schedule to help other people coach them um in drums or even if they want to talk about more things about writing music or things that they're composing um sure. how to how to make it how to make it better you know um so that's the stick Academy at stickacademy.com and um, on the app you can see the various courses and things we offer there and you know I've got a merch shop set up there that we're we're slowly improving and um, but yes, you know totally it's fun to have little shirts and coffee mugs oh yeah <laughs> you know I mean you gotta I mean I I, yeah. I love it and I was I was a customer of your uh, I, I had your cider when it came out oh, I, I'm awesome. getting my wife got me some for my birthday and I had it and I kept the like glass it came in and I remember moving houses and I was like, I got to keep this. And then I moved again and I was like, all right, it got lost somewhere in there over oh, five I years know, of dude. moving it. Moving but I loved terrible. it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so that's incredible. And I just, you are such a unique drummer. I, I, I want to say that I remember seeing you, uh, what is it? God, 22 years ago, I believe you were at um drum days in columbus i think it was 2002 huh. so it was like a drum festival there was like i think it was you i believe it was um uh akira jimbo i believe jack dejanet was there as well um, that that sounds familiar yeah i kind of remember that a little bit well you yeah. were there i can tell okay. you because uh because <laughs> <laughs> i remember being blown away because you sat down and of course you see um, the guys like Akira Jimbo, I think he sat down and played like a Yamaha, like electric kit that was insane and triggers and solo. And I know you have the skill to do all of that, but you sat down and were playing more musical. I think you played the, the drum part all the way through to Jerry was a race car driver. And I was just like, as a fan, I was like, this is awesome. I mind oh, blown. Good, good. Yeah. When I do those things, I often worry that drummers just, uh, they're all there to just see all this flash and, you know, just tons of notes and all this stuff. And so I, I, I would rather do the musical part myself because I, I don't feel comfortable trying to do all that stuff. You know, I do it in, no. in tasteful little bits. That's kind of how I do it. And I like to do it in a song, you know, soloing yes. is yes. soloing's okay for me. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. You know, I feel like I'm doing my, uh, better playing when there's music going on. 
Well, you're, I mean, playing with Primus, a lot of the songs are like so musically musically driven and like melodic. It's like solos in each song. But I I do want to correct myself. It was 2003. It was Akira Jimbo, Jack DeJanette, Dorico Watson, Bill Bachman, Jeff Queen, Bill Stewart, and you. And uh, you were my favorite. And I remember mm, uh, getting a hot, a hot pocket at the concession stand <laughs> and then watching you and just being like a happy uh, 13-year-old boy at that oh, point. Oh, nice. Um, so um, cool, cool. Yeah, no, Tim. Again, uh, incredible um, background, and everyone, check out Stick Academy. We'll put the link will be in the description, and we'll probably talk about it more as we wrap up. But yeah, um, Tim. So I think this is going to be super cool. What I want to do is play some video clips, and I'll have them running here, like with a screen share as we as we talk, okay. uh, and they'll be muted. You know, honestly, the first one I want to talk about is the kind of. Uh, out of left field song that that I don't think anyone expected to be such a massive song. My name is Mud, which you can probably thank Beavis and Butthead and stuff like that for for helping it get so huge. Right. This is such a unique kit that you were playing here. Um, what is the story with this setup? All right. So that's that's purely it's purely just to be able to be out in the woods, you yeah. know, to play the group. A video a video it, kit. it's yeah. video it's it's definitely um i don't know why we chose that one i mean we we probably could have brought a drum set but i think we were moving locations uh we weren't just in one spot the whole time but sure um if i can remember right that was a long time ago <laughs> yeah yeah really what is the um set you're playing here yeah, so I think if I remember correctly, this is more of what might be a practice kit. So it's one, it's just a head. I think it's a Remo like practice kit. Um, it's just like a head, drum head on a stand. Okay. And I think that they're tensioned to the mount that they're on. And that's okay. it. There's there's no shells, um, and you can see the stands fold, and you can see all the different uh, yeah. joints. So those can all it can all be packed up into a nice little convenient thing. And it's a simple kick. Um, I think I had a snare drum and and then one of these rack these uh, rack tom. I don't know. Head. Yeah, head things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's two symbols there in a hi hat. So it's really just to be able to play this play along to the song. You know, it's not uh making yeah. a statement about, you know, me playing any kind of uh drum set to emulate what I did on the recording. Sure. No. Yeah. And but just like I never, I've watched this video probably a thousand times over the years, and I never really thought about it as a little practice kit. But now that you say that, I see how it folds into itself. That's yeah. one of those things where every every brand kind of has their technology that they're like, this is our mobile practice. You know, DW has theirs. It's like their little practice set. Uh, yeah, but I, totally. I never, I never would have thought about that. But it's such a cool video. What was it like yeah. shooting this video? Oh, it was... It was really, really cool, and Les was really clever. You know, he's he's behind a lot of these videos and directing them and a lot of the concepts. So, um, you know, for sure. my my role was pretty s straightforward in this one. I believe we were out near uh, Neil Young's property, or or Neil Young lived nearby there, and we. Uh, the director and um, I, I'm not sure if Mark Core was the director on this, but we worked with Mark Core a lot, and he okay. became a he became a famous video director uh, in the '90s. Um, cool. Ended up doing a lot of Green Day and all kinds of the big names, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, it very stylized. I mean, so beyond cool, but, but I like how a lot of your, your guys' videos over the years have like kind of wild out there story and then shots of like the instruments and you guys playing like, like this, like where you're just kind of like 
cut to Tim on the drums. I like that. I sort of, yeah. and then Larry there playing guitar, Lur playing the guitar. I think right, it's just incredible. Right. So, um, well, it, cool. it definitely shaped, it shaped the bizarre nature of a lot of, uh, I, I don't know that nineties kind of, um, it was the opposite. It was the, it, it's, it's like you guys, how do you put it? You're not really grunge, but you, you know that, I mean, you're, you're yeah. sort of that it came out at that point where it was just so different and it, and it was perfect. Um, yeah, we've been, yeah. uh, that's kind of the, uh, <laughs> pros and cons of Primus is <laughs> we don't fit in a lot of boxes, you know? And, yeah. um, but we've been fortunate to be able to play with a variety of different bands, you know, from Fishbone, um, to Slayer, you know, yeah. and we can, and it seems like the crowds enjoy it. You know, they're not, they're not anticipating oh just a metal band and then they hate us, you know, they, sure, we, sure. we still are able to, um, perform and play our instruments as well as we can. And I think people enjoy it. Even if you're uh, in whatever that, that scene is that we're in. And yeah. so we've been fortunate in that totally. to be a little bit heavy, a little bit weird and, and play our instruments fairly well. And, you know, um, so that combination is, uh, we've been able to fit in a lot of different genres but the interesting thing too is when um, Apple was creating iTunes, I was we heard the story that one of the engineers was a Primus fan, and he uh, was trying to figure out what category Primus fits in, <laughs> and he, he didn't know he, he couldn't really classify it. So, in I don't know if it's still there, but in the original iTunes under categories, there's a Primus category. That's, that's awesome. It, yeah. Uh, you know, there's rock, <laughs> country, classical, reggae, jazz, and down the list. And then there's a Primus. Primus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind oh, of, man, that kind cool. of tells you where we sit. <laughs> you, you can't well, just put us yeah. into one, one thing. No, but I feel very strongly and I, I've always felt that it's kind of similar, I think, to like Rush, where like yeah. not style wise, but there's people who love Rush who maybe other people don't get it. And they're like, I don't get this, but it's like a brotherhood or sisterhood, a fraternal fraternal order of Primus fans where like yeah. you hear someone say Primus sucks. You're like, yes, I get it. It's it, you're you're completely on the inside of like uh, it, you're, you, you're like a you just have diehard fans and I think it's incredible. And, and um, I'm happy and proud to be one. Um, awesome. This episode is brought to you by Atlanta drum shop. Atlanta drum shop is Atlanta's only one stop shop for drummers needs. New pre-owned vintage consignment rentals, repairs, lessons, you name it. Atlanta drum shop does it all. Atlanta Drum Shop's next clinic is going to feature the amazing Justin Scott on July 16th at 7 p.m. Please go to atlantadrumshop.com where you can buy gear and also stay up to date on future clinics like the one they're doing with the great Justin Scott on July 16th. And also follow them at Atlanta Drum Shop on all social media. Thanks to Atlanta Drum Shop for sponsoring this episode. So John the Fisherman, we were before we I showed you a few of these Let's talk about this, what kit we're seeing yeah. here, but then also the kit you recorded on, which as I understand was your first uh, drum set, but what's yeah. the drum set in this, in this video here? So yeah, this video, um, it's actually a kit I bought from, I think he was an early Primus drummer before me. Um, and then this was one of his kits and I bought it. It's a really, really nice killer Gretsch kit. And um, I only recorded, I think I recorded Miscellaneous Debris, which was an EP. I think yep. I used that kit on that. And um, yeah, it's, it's really deep toms uh, or bigger than I'm used to. You know, it's kind of like sure. the longer toms and the longer kick drum. And, uh, yeah, that, that was probably like a 10, 12, 14, 16 setup drum wise. Mm -hmm. 
And then if you notice on the snare drum, I used to use those. It's that really, really tough, hard, um, you can crank it and, and it, uh, it's like the, Oh, like, like Kevlar Kevlar. Yeah. That's the word. Sorry. Yeah. 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 I believe it was one of those Kevlar heads. And so I had that thing cranked and that's one of the, <laughs> that's one of the ways I got that sound, you know, wow, which cuts through. It completely cuts through. Yeah. And so, then the Zill Bell, the Zill Bell makes an appearance on this, which is it uh, kind sure of a classic does. Yeah, sure <laughs> Tim does. Alexander thing. Right, yeah. right. Um, yeah, and that one I mainly use in Too Many Puppies, but yes. um, I do I do play it on this song for just one one quick one quick hit. But when I recorded it, I used one uh my very first five piece drum kit was a was a an old Ludwig wood grain um just standard sizes and it was uh looked like a you know furniture it was like this this dark wood yeah and um and I had a roto tom for my third tom it was a cheap way to get more more drums you know, is to go with the rototom. Sure. You know? Yeah. And, uh, I, cause I wanted to, I wanted to pretend to be Neil Peart as much as possible. And, uh, rototoms yes. was a way to achieve that. <laughs> well, it sounded good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we toured and played and I used that Ludwig kit for many years. And then when we, uh, went and, shot this video i i had the gretch kit and then after this as we did miscellaneous debris i think um where i used this kit but then after that well we can get to that but after that was when i changed to pork pie which like i've had bill on the yes we will get to that i've had bill on the show before i mean legend doesn't oh, really? begin to to describe yeah bill's been on and did the history of pork pie and we talked about you in that episode um okay but again i feel like i'm now uber geeking out but like how you felt about neil getting the uh roto toms i bought because of i believe i saw you playing i bought a remote hi-hat stand when i was a kid that i had mm. no business using and <laughs> it was like 400 I, I worked like all summer and bought like a, a remote hi-hat and it was right. like and then I, I think a month later, I returned it and bought a bunch of symbols. But I was like, um, it's just like Tim. And I had a Zillbell. That thing is hard to tame. That thing is like, that will yeah. ring. I think we, we jammed on too many puppies. And it was like, okay, w- there's not much I'm doing besides playing too many puppies with my brother in the basement. Yeah, it's an, it's an <laughs> accent piece. You know, you don't yes. use it no. too often. And you know what? I, we, I tame it. I'll, I'll put on the inside, I've got gels to sure. kind of mellow it out but in the old days you know it was just we were live in these clubs and you know i needed to be as loud as i could so uh <laughs> Zilba, the bell, yeah yeah that cut through you know to do like the too many puppies thing yeah exactly what happened to your do you still have your first ludwig kit or did that go somewhere else no you know i i sold it a long, 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 long time ago to a friend. And, yeah. uh, it I happens. don't need, I don't I even, yeah. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> yeah. Now you guys, I just, this isn't really drum related exactly, but, um, John, the fisherman was in guitar hero, right? Oh, I think you're right. I never Cause played it, but yeah, I think you're right. I had a friend who was a guitar player. Ex- I was never very good, extremely good at it. And I remember seeing Primus and John, the fisherman on there and, it's just cool to introduce a whole different generation of people to songs like that, which that's definitely the benefit of that, you know, games like that because people now know about Primus. Yeah. 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 They really promoted stuff pretty well. (laughs) Yeah. Um, All right. So I got Jerry here as well. Jerry was a race car driver. Oh yeah. And I got a freeze frame here. So what's the story on this kit? Aha. So that's when I moved up into the big time. (laughs) (laughs) so it's it's crazy 
you won't believe how this happened. But so we got signed to Interscope Records. Uh, this was before we made Caesar Cheese. Frizzle Fry was our last record. It was an independent, you know, smaller label kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, so we get, you know, signed to Interscope and we're about to embark on making our first major label record. And so we're thinking, oh, I should get a new drum set, you know? And so I was talking with Brain who he brain was using pork pie at the time in uh his uh, his band i think that i think he was in the limbo maniacs at the time here in the bay area i so i talked to bill Dedimore and he you know builds me this kit custom kit and it's really awesome and beautiful he ships it up to us up here in oakland and I opened the thing up and, and Les and I were just looking at it. It's just like, you know, just shells and all the hardware is apart and everything was just laying on the floor. And we're, we're literally like, I believe we were just like days away from going in the studio. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, like we've got to figure out how to put this together. And it's a huge it, kit. It was yeah. all in pieces. Yeah. I had no idea what to do. You know, it was just, it was crazy. So we finally figured it out. And with the rack system, you know, I, I, not only do you have the, the drums I had to put together and make it work, um, but the whole stand system to mount everything, like, it it was it was crazy and it was literally like i believe it was like one or two days before we were going in the studio and we're like wow what do we do yeah. with this yeah. and so i called zildjian and i told you know i and i said something like you know i've i've got this kit and i love zildjian i wasn't endorsed by zildjian at the time i was like i love your symbols um but i've got this you know, crazy kit and I've got no symbols. I'm about to go record this record. And so they're like, no problem. They sent me up all kinds of symbols and I put this mm. kit together and, you know, it sounds amazing. Like I believe, I think yeah. Neil, Neil, Neil Peart was loved the sound of the drums on, on the Caesar cheese record. I think he really, really that's loved it. incredible. And it's it's an all analog recording, and I think that element really captures the tones very well on this kit. It's it's all maple, and the the edges around where the heads sit on the drum those are all were done um, to just make it really really sharp sounding sure um yeah but you can change you can change that bearing edge of the drum if people don't know that edge can yeah. be thicker or like really to a point almost and yeah. it'll change the sound of the drum and yeah. um yeah so whereas like vintage drums were more rounded over and less attacky but these are yeah. like pork pie build that a more super sharp yeah with like yeah you know clear and, heads just cutting yeah yeah and i i used on it does look like i have clear heads on there on this this shot yeah um and that you know we filmed that at the phoenix theater in in petaluma um mm. so i would imagine i was doing shows with those heads you know that was sure. an actual touring system there yeah and uh yeah. no that that kit sounds amazing and it's in and it had a, like a, a yellow gold finish oh and all the hardware was i think it was brass basically just really super custom 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and did this get you into the Octobon kind of size over on the left or those, I, I yeah, those are, those, those are Octobons that he made out of clear plexiglass. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I was, I love those. And that sound yeah. I, it got on the, the song 11, you know, that's, yes, that's that those intro. Octobons. Yes. Yeah. It, it yes. sounds incredible. And currently this, this setup is in the Musical Instruments Museum in Scottsdale. I've heard of that place. Yeah. It sounds incredible. It it'll blow your mind. It's <laughs> it's way more it's way more than what it sounds. I yeah. mean, it is massive and it's got instruments from every part of the world and you won't believe how interesting it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, this was my I mean like this was your big like you said, major label debut. And, uh, right. it is truly, I mean, it sounds all the other, the previous albums, like, I mean, frizzle fry and everything, they all sound great, but this is an iconic album. I mean, in, in Tommy, the cat, I mean, there's here come the bastard, Sergeant Baker, American life. I've always loved American life. All these songs are just yeah. incredible. Um, Oh, and then you got like the gong bass drum kind of, uh, uh, set up going here. I've never used yeah. a gong bass drum personally. That became kind of a staple of your, um, set up there. You yeah, know? that's, you know, that's something that's a Neil Pert thing. Yes. Um, and it has a very different sound because it's a timpani head and the timpani head is stretched over the shell. So it, it, it changes the, the sound a lot. It changes the sound a lot. It, it, you okay, can yeah. you can hear it. It doesn't. It it has a more of a mid rangey, deep tone than any other than the floor tom. You know, um, yeah. it's a really interesting sounding drum, and we try to try to make it sound as good as you can on on the record. You know, totally. Well, job well done. Um, now, Winona's Big Brown Beaver. Yeah, you know. This this kit's probably, I think it's Les's Vista Light kit, amber looking Bonzo yeah. style. Yeah, yeah, and it, it you know it's it's for the video once again. Sure. And there's a tribute to Buck Naked and the Bare Bottom Boys. It was a band. They're a, they were a band in San Francisco, and and Buck got shot and killed just oh wow randomly so this was a tribute tribute to them you know and and uh brain i guess in the shake hands with beef video later is using an amber vista light so i wonder if it was the same one that um oh uh, less is less less had because it, it could be would make sense yeah if it was his but yeah it could be was this a i imagine this was a less uh invention the the whole video uh for this one with the crazy prosthetics and stuff i mean what was this whole thing yeah i i I think it had to do with one of our guys at the record label who uh, i believe he thought it would be interesting you know i could be wrong i don't i don't know the exact story but the mass and the whole look duracell was doing commercials at that time so it's the same special effects company that did the Duracell commercials with those weird looking families. And yes. Okay. So yeah, there they are. <laughs> yeah. So it's so the same people. It's the, the same, same special pe- effects. Same people wow. did us. Yes. So on the punch bowl record that has the, um, the beaver song on it. And why known as big brown beaver. So yeah. the kit in the video is not what I recorded with. The what I recorded with was a light wood grained Tama um Star Classic kit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and we actually had microphones I think they were called May, M A E. Yeah, inside the drums. Inside the drums and that's why you that's why you really hear that inside shell sound on all my drums and i'm not sure i liked that liked it that much (laughs) but you know it just 
it made a lot of sense touring so that all we had to do was plug a microphone into the side of the drum uh mic cable and yeah. done you don't have to like set up mics and mic stands and all this stuff so we went with that route and we decided to record with them like that too and that's the sound we got on the punch bowl record which is awesome and it sounds i mean that but those became kind of ubiquitous with like i know alex van halen used them we talked about i think slingerland was like selling drums with them pre-installed in that which came up on on a recent episode Um, so Okay, yeah. and then the last one I've got here was DMV, which I always love this song because this was more of a live video. Pork pie, right? It's the same pork pie kit, yes. yes. So Seize the Cheese and the album Pork Soda was all done um, on the pork pie set. Okay. And, and then you were with Pork Pie up until when did you switch? When did you switch to Tama? Was it like in ninety late ninety five? Okay, ninety five. I think I did. And gotcha. there wasn't a switch, you know. The Pork Pie kit, I bought that. Um, oh, really? So I wasn't really like endorsing endorsing Pork Pie like on a like the way that Tama does, you know, where they will you know provide you with the stuff and in return they um you know use their name on their their website and promote promote their gear you know with me and and um but pork pie you know i bought that oh and you can see there the lug that holds the head on you see that weird shaped lug those are the yes. brass those are the brass lugs okay okay yeah, yeah so Classic, unique. Uh, I love. I've always loved Bill's lug design, and just, I mean, I know you obviously enjoyed pork pie from playing it, but they sound uh, great. Yeah, he's just such a, a genius and an innovator, and he's behind so many things that people don't really know about, which I think is pretty cool. Like he's oh, just interesting. Yeah, you should. I'll send you that episode. I think you'd find it interesting. Um, hmm. To hear Bill talk about all the stuff he's doing, the the new Rogers drums, making Orange County drums. Oh wow, all that really? Stuff. It's yes, it's super super cool. But um, what another one I have here, which is more recent, which is the uh, I believe this picture. You can hopefully see it. Uh, I found this online, kind of an overview of the I believe it's the Wonka um, stuff you guys did. Yes. Um, that's so, an incredible explain this again for people who aren't watching just kind of a rundown of what we got here okay so what we're looking at are two two kits and they're set in Oops, like a I'm circle sorry. yeah they're set in like a circle so the idea behind it was we would do the wonka set first and so that was all the music from the willy wonka movie of uh, charlie and the chocolate factory yeah. And um and in that when we did that record, we wanted to make more of a percussion kit, not a drum set. And so we just went kind of crazy. Like I you you see all I have two big like eighteen inch roto toms above a kick drum. Um octobon sitting above that and then i had two more um i think i had a rototom but then the i had the heads off of them so i could hit the yeah. rim that rim sound because cool. they make they make really cool bell sounds the rims do when you take the heads off so sure. we had those mounted there was no snare drum and i used um this thing called a ufo it's like a slit drum carved out of metal um and i played some um, patterns on that for a couple songs on the on the wonka stuff um Hmm. you know it was really a big percussion kit and i created patterns i created these i created these rhythms um to go with the music because the music has no drums, the original music. There's no yeah, drums it on it. Yeah. So I started from scratch and, and we built this kit and then I had to um, create the music or 
I had to musically create the patterns. Um, that is the rhythm of that, that album. And, um, yeah. Which is incredible. Yes. But then live, we would do Primus songs. So then I had to have another kit set up there so that I could pull all of that off. And that's why I had my big kit sitting connected to the Wonka kit. And it just wraps around me so that I could, you know, do one set of Wonka and then switch to the regular kit. Which and, has some kind of some Neil vibes from having the kit here and you can spin around and hit it. I mean, it's kind of classic. And you have yeah. like the, uh, the the very percussive things and the, the crotales, I think they are. Lo- yeah. Looks like. uh, yeah. So yep. I some, have some, those. Yeah. Some Neil inspiration. Definitely a lot of Neil Pert inspiration there. But my, I didn't have a spinning drum riser. So <laughs> we had it set up yeah. where you could you could see that I was playing uh, the Wonka kit, but then if I rotated to the other kit, you could still see me. So it was set up in, in, in that format. So visually, visually it wasn't like one kit in front and one in behind. They were both kind of aimed left and right a little more, you know? Got it. So so you could, so from the stage, you could see what I was doing. Or that which I was is cool, there. which is yeah, some yeah, something you have to think about. Um, yeah, you do. And then, uh, lastly, why don't we kind of get close to wrapping up here and talk okay. about? I've got a few screenshots from uh, Instagram here of oh, your yeah. most recent setup because so I am uh, kind of internet buddies with Gunnar Olson, oh, uh, yeah. who's playing with uh, Pucifer right now, and right. um. We we both bonded originally over loving the Sopranos, and he is a he's got me beat. He is a diehard diehard fan of the Sopranos, so we started oh, yeah. talking about that. But right. but we also bonded over loving Primus and your drumming. Oh, wow. And he told me originally how uh, he saw you at I believe he was like thirteen or something at Woodstock ninety four. Yeah, with your guys like iconic performance with Les with the American flag shirt and stuff. Um, and he was there. So I'm sure he probably told you that on the road. Um, yeah, he told me that story, and that was yeah. his first concert that his mom took him to, and him, him and his mom were there. And my mom, my mom took me to my first Primus concert, and uh, oh wow! So we we so we bond over that. Um, Very cool. And my my mom liked it. She loves she loved Primus. So nice. that's you, your your mo- mother approved. Um, before we go forward, was that was that ninety four um, kit? Was that the pork pies on that? Yeah, table? on uh, Woodstock. Yeah, that was yeah, the yeah. that was the pork pie set. Okay, that makes sense. That's uh, that's cool. But okay, so what do we have here with your most current um, setup? Let me pull it over here. So yeah, no worries. What's the what's the layout you're using right now? So what that is, um, it's a. It's a Tama Star. Um, I believe it's a Star series. So, um, but it's specially made that it's. It was made for the Wonka tour, and it's okay. a dark chocolate wood grain. So I made a chocolatey looking set for the Wonka tour, and Makes sense. Um, <laughs> yeah, and but they're all concert toms. So there's no bottom head. And what that does is it gives me a lot of good attack and not a lot of ring. Um, although sometimes I do get a lot of ring that we have to muffle down. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't have that tone, that super warm tone that you'll get from having two heads. This is made uh, for a much more staccato sound, real sharp, quick. Yeah. And yeah. it's basically, um, on the last tour, I, I had uh, an 8, 10, 12 across the top, and then a 14 floor tom. And was it a 14 or 6? I think it's a 16. And then I had a 14 floor tom on the left. Yeah. 
But then there's also, sometimes I'll move the three toms, I'll make them a little bigger. So I'll go 10, 12, 14 across the top and then have 16, 18 floor toms. I've, over the years, I've just really um, leaned toward really deeper sounding drums. I I love feeling the vibrations of those deeper, those deeper drums. Yeah. Um, And then I have the Octobons as well still still use those um and i use this kit on also we did that album the uh the goblins uh yeah, album yeah, that we awesome. did yes and um yeah you know that the album is really cool it I, is I've, cool i've got to say it's really different and it's like a soundtrack as well yeah but i use this I use this on that, but what was interesting on that record is I had, I had moved everything centered. So nothing went too far left or too far right. So what I did was I took the octobons and I put them in between each Tom. So it was harder to to do like a straight across pattern across all the octobons because they're much further apart now because they were sitting in between each drum. But yeah. it made for some interesting patterns. Yeah, and then that I w- so it's the desaturating seven yeah, album d- title there. But but yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, it is it is awesome. And I'm, there's I'm such just the, used the, to the, calling it goblins. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just, I'm sure. I yeah. just wanted to put it out there. And I, yeah, I remember listening to it. Uh, I think I was cooking or something in my kitchen. It's just like it just it's perfect length and just it's kind of uh it's hard to explain again it's primus it's just like yeah. it's all cohesive you guys have never really changed right. it's just yeah it's just classic but um no i love this setup and what is this there's a cool stack over here that you have going on um, yeah so on your right you know back in the early days i used a wuhan uh china and that's what neil pert used yeah, me too. And yeah. yeah, and I loved it. And then um, when I started endorsing Zildjian, um, I started to use their China. And their China was very different from the Wuhan sound. It was thicker and it kind of rang more and had more of a note to it. And I've been using it for years, but recently I was over at Zildjian and so they've come out with these symbols that have the holes in them. And I was looking for a different China effect. And uh, Kirsten over there at Zildjian said, well, try this. And so she flipped them over. And one's, a, one's a, I think they're both crashes and one's a little bigger than the other. And they're flipped upside down. And when you stack them, they make just the most amazing uh china sound even better than the wuhans to me they're it's quick it's sharp it gives you that that sound but it doesn't sustain at all yeah and so i i really dig that um that stack that that i have now so it's great totally yeah that's awesome. Probably a little more durable than the Wuhans, which we all know at some point will just start flying off. Oh yeah, of, they break because they're, they're crazy. Fifty dollar symbol or something. But, yeah. Um, Tim, this is awesome, man. This is incredible to get to talk to you. I am definitely. Oh, I know y- you guys are coming. So I'm in Cincinnati. Okay. You're coming here July 30th with Coheed and Cambria. So I'm going to try and Great. be there. Uh, I will be there. Oh, um, cool. So it'll be awesome. Right. Um, looking forward to it. I'll, I'll send you some, uh, uh, more information. I'm going to send you some, if, if you're on the road, some episodes, I think you'll like, I think the, the okay. Neil Peart series, that's a deep dive with, uh, Paul Wells from Juilliard, absolute Neil nerd fest that I think you wow. might enjoy if you That'd get, be if interesting. You get bored. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, anyway, Tim, let's, so for people again, um, be sure to check out stick Academy, uh, at stickacademy.com. Yes, uh, and then Tim, you want to share anything else like your social media, any other good stuff like that? Um, I think my biggest one is the the Instagram account. That's the Tim Alexander sixty five, and um, you know I'm not a super poster, but I'm putting stuff up every so often, and um, most a lot of it's it's related to the Stick Academy. 
But, uh, you know, I like, I like to go live and just sometimes I'll just practice and I'll let you, I'll let you watch and hang out. And so I've, I've done a few cool. of those. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, I think, um, I think I have it under the stick Academy is where I'll post the live stuff as well. And, um, you know, I've got like a stream thing that I'll do when I go live. It goes to YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, and Facebook. So cool. I'll can, share all that. Yeah. You can find me yeah. on those for sure. Awesome. Well, Tim, again, I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here. And, uh, I've had an absolute pleasure talking with you again as a lifelong Primus fan. And, uh, it's just incredible. So thank you for taking the time to do this. And uh, I'm, you're a busy guy, so I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it.